Part three is how the media covered the story of John Not Notorious Fruit Loop Termel being arrested on Parliament Hill with a life sentence supply of marijuana, having run 50 or so times in the area, having been busted for gambling, busted for trespassing, now busted for drugs right on Parliament Hill. You'd have thought it would made a story. So when all three Ottawa newspapers, the Citizen, the Ottawa Citizen, the Sun, the Droit, killed the story, you had to know something funny was going on. So much so that Frank Magazine, uh, Satire Magazine, making fun of politicians, did a story called Hill Hack Sleep Through Drug Bust, making fun of all the reporters who closed their eyes to such a big, wild story. So, this is the reporting on what happened that day and why not many people knew about my sacrifice or why I did it. But for six years now, I've been under either bail or probation, having to report to the authorities. And uh, I think it was worth it. But it's come to an end on March 29, 2009. My three years probation is over and I'm finally a free man. So this is part three. Let's me put the boots to all those crooked reporters who somehow or other managed to suppress what I was trying to do successfully. And finally, an article in Frank Magazine says, Hill Hacks Sleep Through Drug Bust. And this was later on. Uh, Frank Magazine being a sort of jokester magazine makes fun of the politicians and stuff. So, And uh, the pop quiz, a man is arrested on Parliament Hill with a significant quantity of marijuana, which he is apparently attempting to distribute to MPs. Is it a story? Not, it seems, if the accused is serial candidate and Fruit Loop, John Termel. Well, you'd think that would make it even more of a story, that the uh, serial Fruit Loop candidate's facing a life sentence, wouldn't you? The tiresome Termel, what, they get tired of hearing me speak about interest-free financing for 25 years? Which is why they stopped telling the voters about interest-free financing they could have been voting for? A professional gambler who holds Guinness record for the most successful attempts to attain public office has run in 53 federal, provincial, municipal contests, wasting the time of such notable opponents as Byron Muldoon and Sheila Copps. 53, they couldn't even get the number right. The press, understandably, is heartily sick of him. Well, he, he, Termel keeps talking about the desirability of interest-free banking and no cops in, you know, in victimless crime. They're just so sick of hearing about how we must end prohibition of gambling, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, and the Bank of Canada should give everyone interest-free loans. They're just really tired of it all. You can understand why I laugh heartily when I hear about TV, radio stations, and newspapers laying off staff. And just recently with the crash, huge numbers of these guys must be laid off now. Good to know. So they continue so much so that even when he was allegedly caught on May 14th at the member's entrance at a center block, attempting to bring legislators free dope as some kind of vague statement on decriminalization, none of the 300 plus alleged journalists covering the hill noticed. So I said it was only vague to those newspapers not bright enough to find out. I posted my thing that day, right? The law died on Terry Parker Day, so I was smoking a joint and showing them my stash. How vague. And actually, a good dozen reporters had sworn me once I'd been taken into custody. It wasn't the journalists who killed the story. It made the Toronto Star, Globe and Mail, Soleil, Taipei Times. It just got, uh, it just, that it should have been made bigger and it got squelched. Can you imagine the odds of an Ottawa paper not printing a story on a hometown boy facing a life sentence? Now, cube the odds for three newspapers killing the story. Pretty long odds, eh? So they continue. According to the police, Termel had three kilos, yes, kilos of marijuana in Ziploc bags, enough to supply each and every member of Parliament with nearly 10 grams of smoke, smooth smoking pleasure. Hill Security flat feet first mildly suggested he should take his stash elsewhere. When he refused, the RCMP arrested him and charged him with possession for the purpose of trafficking. He scheduled to appear in court May 29th. The accused is known to police, having previously been busted for running an unlicensed gambling establishment in 1993. When he ran in a 2001 by-election in Perry Sound, Muskoka to replace Ernie Eves, his winning ways somehow got him charged with trespassing at a frigging all-candidates meeting. 
from which I'd been excluded. I guess his kind of radical would have just taken it and gone home, eh? I was fighting for democracy, and they make it sound like a prank. So they continue, Frank. It is not known whether Turmel was successful in distributing the judge, uh, drugs to any MPs, but the Prime Minister grew forgetful later that night, dropping a reference to the marijuana bill that was part of his prepared speech at a Montreal fundraiser, while Health Minister Anne McClellan seemed to be suffering from a bout of mild paranoia, warning that reefer madness would stock the land if weed is decriminalized. And notice the headline says, Ottawa holds back marijuana bill, and then Parliament died, and Parliament never re-legislated a new prohibition, which is why our Polkoa argument is still valid. Parliament only legislates, courts only abrogate. So when the courts said they resurrected the law, they didn't. So, I go back a quarter century, and all the old liberals in the House know John Turmel. I can understand why Jean Chrétien dropped his reference to the new marijuana prohibition when the minister decided to drop its introduction the very next day. And the day after, the Rogan decision came down and we had legal cannabis with no impending new legislation for a couple of weeks until they did finally introduce new legislation they're so desperate to pass before the House session ends. But then Parliament died. Anywho, Frank says, Coverage of a hempy hullabaloo right under the nose of the parliamentary press corps was roughly zero. True, not much. Some, but not much. Again, despite, I'm saying, despite the massive suppression of the 400 reporters who heard what happened, it did get out. It did go international. It just never made it in my hometown, nor to Frank's attention to now. Good for them. So, Frank, unborable national putz Tim Nomitz actually followed up on the story until an editor sniffed that he didn't want to dignify Turmel with any more publicity. So the National Post, who did the only story, the pit victory, has editors who snuff the most noteworthy events. And Frank doesn't think there's something unethical there. It's a noteworthy event, but because the person who did it, we're not going to mention it. Good journalism. Controlled press. So, in what can only be a bullish sign for Turmel's political prospects, it turns out he can, contrary to reports, still get arrested in Ottawa. It's just that nobody cares. Well, I said if 400 members of the bot press don't care, that means nobody cares. Almost everyone I've mentioned it to are stunned to realize the censorship exerted on such an unusual and politically relevant and opportune event. It made China, but not Ottawa. So, Turmel could probably have been reached for comment, but Frank didn't bother. Which, I say, which explains Frank's sad performance in getting so many facts wrong. They don't care. It's the kind of daring bravado they're renowned for. It's Frank, it's honest, but it's mostly wrong. So, I eventually got convicted after a real railroad job. You can read about it on my blog. And then I did my three years of probation. And that ends today. So the next time I'm facing some cop who's going to bust me for trespassing at a meeting and I choose to stay and go back, I won't be facing the double charge anymore. The threat of breaching my conditions and probation is now finished. I'm a free man!